Um, but we will start with a band called Pyogenesis. Um, they are they hail from Germany. This is their eighth album. Their sound. There's a lot that goes into their sound, which I will get to. I promise. Um, it's just. I don't often get bands and artists on like well I don't often talk about bands and artists on this podcast that have got much in the way of like a backstory. A lot of what I cover on here is very new, very uh, modern, and a lot of like newer bands that have only been around for a few years or just a couple of albums. So to get an idea of. First of all, it's nice to like go back and have a look at Pyogenesis, um, how they end up getting here. But the sound that makes up their new album, which I don't know if I think I call, uh, mentioned it, it's called A Silent Soul Screams Loud. To get an idea of the sound that they've, um, they're using, or they're doing, you kind of do have to go through the back catalogue a little bit. So uh, they began life in 1991. Off in the ashes of a death metal band called, I think it's called e- Inhuman Touch. Um, whatever it was, it came from like an OG death metal band. They, re- um, they formed Pyogenesis initially as a death metal band. And very, very quickly after they formed, they started incorporating more doom elements. So it became like a death doom sort of thing. But before their debut album came out, they went into a gothic metal tone which they would end up becoming one of the early pioneers of the genre at large. So, yeah, they start off this, like, big, dramatic, gothic metal um, proprietor of the genre. At uh, 1998's uh, Mono, or Will It Ever Be The... I'll try again, it's a difficult word. Mono, or Will It Ever Be The Way It Used To Be... Uh, they started incorporating more punk rock into their sound and eventually became a bit more of a like, gothic punk sort of deal. Um, flicking through little bits, I've kind of got an idea of like an early um, or like a lower production AFI sort of thing. From that, they eventually, on 2002's um, She Makes People Wish I Had a Gun, that is just a mad, mad blend of goth of punk and of pop rock and a few years after that in 2005 Pyogenesis would break up and they wouldn't reform until 2014 from which at that point onwards they have just been a maddening hodgepodge of all the genres that they've ever touched on ever. So this is album number three since they've returned and um, it's kind of, like, kind of like a steampunk trilogy that they've been working on it's their first album with a brand new guitarist called Thilo uh, Schmidt, or Thilo Schmidt. And yeah, so you have a song like Mother Bohemia, which is track number two, that opens with a big blast beat kind of rhythm. And little dabbles of growl, little dabbles, sorry, of the growl vocals here and there, both in Mother Bohemia and Will Ever Be the Same. You've got uh, a lot of the punk rock, sort of, like the pop punk sort of stuff, coming in through um, not high old times. High old times is like a weird hard rock, borderline glam rock, glam metal kind of thing. Um, a lot of the punk are actually in will I ever be the same as well? I think, um, but the, the biggest takeaway I got was a lot of the goth is still in that. A lot of that comes from the vocalist, uh, Flo Schwartz, who's been the band leader and like the sole um, concurrent member throughout their inception. He has just like one of the biggest, most impactful uh, vocals. He can hit, some of the notes he hits aren't like horrendously high or aren't horrendously low, but just the power he hits them. And there's never like a judder, like first take I did of this recording, I couldn't say Mother Bohemia without like wobbling up on the throat. He nails some of these like high, um, excuse me, high energy notes with just ease. If you go to I Can't Breathe the pl- prologue, um, the tail end of that is just him hitting like powerful note after powerful note after powerful note on the back is like twinkling. Uh, ambience in the background so 
yeah, I think a large part of what brought me into this album, what kept like hooking me every time I like had it on the background or a lot of spare time, so I'm always listening to music at the moment, so just whenever it's on, the thing that always like, caught my ear was always his, like, well, again, just his vocals. His, um, not so much the lyrics, but literally just the notes he can hit and how he sounds. It's hard to describe, um, but yeah, I think a lot of the, like, gothiness that is still retained in the band's sound largely comes from him. Uh, and that'll be though, this is a very pop metal kind of record. Um, it's, it's weird enough, it still retains a like quite dirty, distorted kind of guitar sound. Um, and for me, I've spent a while trying to pinpoint it, it's kind of like that midpoint between when it becomes like a classic thrash or classic uh, death metal album on like borderline with like an old uh, black metal sort of sound. And the two bands are sort of compared it to like Dark Throne or Necromantian. That sort of like really, not tinny, but not exactly high produced kind of uh, tone. And yeah, they use that, that kind of like quite evil sounding guitar tone to make one some like the most pop and like bombastic kind of guitar licks and like song moments that you can think of. I compared them in my head a lot to Avenged Sevenfold on the way that they could get those massive vocal hooks Val bleh, try again. Massive vocal hooks to work with a very dramatic sounding heavy metal. Um, and yeah, I, th I really, really enjoy this purely because it is, it's easy, it's quite cheesy sounding music um, because it has got an essence of glam to it. The song High, o High Old Times, um, yeah, that's just ridiculously. Um, Borderline camp, it is like the hard rock, uh, glam rock kind of thing, like borderline, borderlines on the world of like ACDC and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I found, I, I kind of not pity them, but because they started life as a, um, a death metal, death doom sort of outfit, um, they are registered on Encyclopedia Metalla, which is a great resource for finding anything like metal. Um, the only problem with it is the core people who run it and use it are very elitist. So unfortunately on there, all their albums are just, they're bombed because they're not uber terrorized death metal anymore. Um, they experimented and liked the experiment and went along with them instead. So it's a weird one. Um, so it's hard to find like a gauge on how each album has reflect them. But looking at other uh, reviews for a silent soul scream, a silent soul screams loud. Fuck me, that's hard. Um, a lot of people are picking up on the case of it is just in your face, very almost like arena rock with grittier guitars. Um, I do find it's quite weird that they end with a 14 minute prog influence song called The Capital. Um, feels a little bit out of place, I won't lie. And it is very much, to me it feels kind of like my first prog song when you've got the like high energy alt rock start, a very idyllic, acoustic, folky sort of middle, and then another big rock ending. You could have split them into three songs and I think it would have fit the overall scope of the album a lot better. But again, they're they're not from the uh, research that I've been looking into Pyogen says they're not a band who want to do things how someone else said. It was just like, well let's try this. It works, we'll carry on. If not we'll fuck off and do something else. So yeah, big cheesy, big um very digestible, very fun. Uh, I don't even know what genre to put it under because there's just so much going on. We just call it pop metal. And I usually hate that term, but it is what it is. It's called A Silent Soul Screams Loud. It's so too many S's for my liking. And it's by a band called Pyogenesis. It's out now. And 
Yeah, good clean fun. Good clean fun. <laughs>